Hey guys, it's going to Dilmer again and welcome back to my channel. So first of all, thank you again for joining today. I really appreciate your time. I also wanted to ask you if you haven't subscribed to the channel yet, to please do so by just clicking on the button below and hitting subscribe because it's really going to help me in bringing you all more content. Today I'm pretty excited because I'm going to continue the videos on Visual Effects Craft. I've been experimenting with Visual Effects Craft and I created an effect that I think you're going to really enjoy that looks like fire. So this is what I'm going to be creating and I'm really excited about showing you the graph. So let's jump into Unity and I start working on it. All right guys, so let me show you what I have so far with this graph. And I want to give you an overview of this project. This project is also available in patreon.com if you want to download it. Or you can also watch me and look to the notes and create it all the way from scratch. So what I have right now is I'm looking at a scene called Fire Effect. And if you look at the fire, this is what we are going to go through and look at some of the different notes that I have on the graph. I also have multiple multiple examples in this project. I have also a sun effect. If we go into, let me go ahead and double click on the scenes. And there we go. And this is the sun effect that I also posted in Twitter. We also have a fire collision effects, which is the same fire effect, but except there's a sphere that is colliding with the particles. You can see that they're kind of going around and that's because there's a, a sphere collider in the in the way of the particles. So let's go ahead and go back into the fire effect and then look at what we're gonna be looking at. So I I really enjoy making this. It actually turned that turned out better than I thought it was gonna turn out. So how do you make something like this? And and honestly what I would recommend that you do if you want to create something like this is you always start from you know lower particle count. So Obviously on this one, I crank it up and I have a lot of different particles, but to achieve that effect, you have to start small. And that's what I normally do when I create an effect. I always start with the lower rate and I always start with the lower capacity. So right now the rate is set to about, let's see, 100,000. And the capacity is set to 2 million. And that's because I already, this is the final version. So I've been moving these particles up and down and then playing, you know, playing around with different notes. So the, the rate, like I said, is 100,000. The capacity is 2 millions. I also have the bounds already set. And these are some of the nodes that I have on the initialized component. The initialized component has the velocity random pre-component. I also have a set lifetime random. Unity also has these checks. Like if you wanted to uncheck this one and see how it affects the graph, you can, you can see how that affects the graph. It actually doesn't change it, at least this one. And that's because I'm actually looking, I did it again, I already did this mistake before, but let me go ahead and pull that. This is for the sun. So it's very similar actually to the graph that I'm gonna be demonstrating. So let me go into this one. And like you, like you, you can see, I already have 100,000 and I also have two millions on this one. So if I uncheck the velocity per random, you can see that the graph is basically regenerating. So I'm gonna check it again. And if I change the uncheck the save lifetime random, it also gets regenerated. And then, so it looks like these two are not really affecting the graph as much. But one of them that it is, is the position sphere. So if we go ahead and change this, you're gonna see that there's a little sphere on the very bottom and this is kind of like the, it's basically the emitter. That's where everything is starting. But if I wanted to change the radius and make it more like, you know, a little smaller, so we just have a line of fire, we could do that. So a position sphere allows you to basically position all different particles around a sphere. In this case, I'm not using that as much, but I do have it a little bit on the very on the very bottom. You can probably just do it like I had it. So I have it set to position mode surface, the span mode is set to random, and then the center, I have it at zero, 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 just at the pivot point, and then the radius is 0.15. And then the arc just allows you to, you know, change the arc around the the angle of the sphere. So in this case, I'm just going to crank it up all the way. So that's everything that I have on the initialized particle. And then the update particle is where a lot of the physics are happening. I have I have three different nodes. One of them is comfort to sphere. And if we change this, you're going to see that the graph starts changing. It looks like it's pal palpitating like a heart. So if I uncheck this, you can see that now it doesn't, doesn't really look like fire anymore. And, and the reason for that is because I'm using some of the attraction force to give it this look and feel. So I played a lot with these notes, so I'm not gonna tell you that I'm an expert because I'm not an expert. 
But like I like I was saying, like if you want to achieve something like this, I would say play around with, you know, with the forces until you get the look and feel that you want, because it's as incrementing the attraction force. Everything is starting to look more like fire. So I'm gonna I'm gonna hit Command Z to undo, and we can also uncheck this, so you can see that now that doesn't really look like fire. So this node is really important to to give us that look. The the other thing that I wanted to also get is I wanted something that looked like turbulence. Like it was basically shaking and, and that's kind of how you see here. There's a lot of shaking going on in here. If I uncheck this node, you're gonna see that now it's it doesn't look like what we what we would expect. So the turbulence is one of the nodes that I really I really like using because it gives you a really realistic look. And the algorithm that I'm using is the Perlin, the Perlin algorithm. And then I just have some of these settings. The intensity is set to 0.17, the drag, frequency, and like I said, some of these are just, you know, I just play around with until I was happy with. So I'm not gonna tell you what numbers you need to plug in, at least some of the nodes that you need. And then you can change some of the numbers depending on what you, what look you want to achieve. So the next node that I have in the physics component, in the update component, is the vector field force. And the vector field force allows me to also give it a really cool look. So if I uncheck this, there is really nothing happening. It's just, it actually looks really cool. I mean, if you want to have a, an effect like that, that's cool. But I wanted the intensity to, I, I wanted the intensity of the forces to basically go up in the y axis. So the intensity is actually pretty high on this one. So if I, re, if I lower it down, you can see that you get a different look. If I move it up, we, we start to get that kind of like thin line going all the way across. I'm just gonna undo. So this is kind of the look that I that I enjoy. And I don't think I did anything. No, I actually did. This is expanded. So the Y value, yeah, so that's the reason why I had the, the Y value um that was higher. So the particles were going up. So if you want the fire to go, you know, much faster at a faster rate, you can see that I'm just changing the size to make that change. So I think 0.96 gave it a cool look, so I'm gonna leave it, leave it at that. And so that's what I have in the update particle. So the other thing that I that I also did is I have a periodic total time, and, and this node is for the attraction speed. So if I didn't have these, the the particle system wouldn't look like I the one that I had. So what I did is I did a range. I did a, a range of a minimum of negative 0.5. So what's gonna happen is over a period of one second we're going to go from this number to this number and then the result is going to is going to be stored in this t variable which is going to be the total and then the total is going to be basically associated with the attraction speed so if i were to remove this connection you're going to see that it's it's still looking okay but we're not getting a lot of that so i'll, I'll show you what i mean by just changing this value so see how that moves as i move that value up and down so that's the move that I want to give give it because I wanted this to look like fire and fire is just not always constant. It's always changing. So that's how I achieve that by using the by using this basically the store value from the minimum and, and max and then assigning that to the attraction speed. So that's why we see some changes on the fire there. And now how I how I achieve the color. So I'm using a quad output. And on the color mapping, I'm using a gradient map, and that's why you see, you know, yellowish color going into red, and that's by using this gradient. One other thing that I use a lot is I use the default particle texture, and this has an alpha value, so that's why I like using that. The other thing that I do is the set size of the particle is set to a very low number, so the particles are really, really small, and in that, it's what allows me to make the you know, to make those look so like it looks like, you know, like real fire. Or if you wanna, if you wanna make water, you wanna make sure that you make those particles really, really tiny, and you have a lot of them, so that it looks more like liquid. In this case, we're you know we're dealing with fire. And the the X, Y, and C scale. This is the values that I that I like. That I you know I I thought were gonna look good with the graph. And the other thing that I do is I change the color by the speed. So I have, you know, with the speed when the speed is 0.1 on X, and when the speed is one, then I change the color based on those two values. 
blank color I just did an override on the on the blank color just to show some of the yellow so you can see if I bring it down it just doesn't really come out but if I bring it up it comes out more and that's because I'm also using post processing and I have a bloom so the bloom is getting caught by these and that's what we see some of these really strong bloom effects and then lastly I just have a, a an alpha blend so that's the that's the entire graph so now if we move into the post processing effects I, I don't have a lot of post-processing effects in this case. I do have a big netting because I wanted, I wanted to have, but you really don't need this. The only reason why I needed this is because I wanted things to look, you know, a certain way. So of course the exposure, I have a pretty, I want to control the exposure. So if I want it to be very dark, I, I could control it. The chromatic variation, I have it enabled. And also the one that I'm using the most here is the bloom. And if we don't want to have any bloom, if you want to have just an old style, you know, fire effect, you can have that. Or if you change the intensity of the bloom, we can get, you know, some of those really bright outlines. Scatter is set to 0.84. And then I just have some changes on the color curve, just basically just to control the, the color of everything that I have in the scene. Basically it's the master, is the master overwrite. So that's everything that I have in this node. Let me show you the on this graph, the other graph, which is the fire collision effect. That one has a, coll a collider and that one actually looks really cool. I'll show you how that one works. And let me go ahead and change the scene. So we're gonna go into my fire collision effect scene. And, and some of these lines are just, honestly, they're just remarkable. I really enjoy making this. But what I wanna show you is the only change that I have on this one is just a collider. And how we can change that in real time is actually Unity did, did an amazing job of making us, uh, allowing us to change that. So look at what I'm gonna do. So I'm gonna go into the hierarchy. I'm gonna select the node that has the visual effect attached to it. Then I'm gonna go to my graph and I'm gonna click on target object. And I'm gonna do that one more time and then I'm gonna click on attach. So now that I have attached, now you're gonna select the collide with Xphere or the collider that you want. You're gonna see that now I have access to the collider itself. So what I could do is I could move this back, I can move it forward. I could animate the, the position of this if I wanted to as well, because the position is stored in this, in this node right here, in the sphere. And you can see that the value of Z is moving, so I could animate it if I wanted to. Or I can maybe crash crash against the, the main, main node to make an explosion. So there's a lot of things that I could do with this implementation. So the other thing that I could do is Unity has these handles on each collider. And in this case, this is a sphere collider, so I could change the size of the collider. I could increment the size of the collider. If I wanted to make it smaller and then move it, you can see how that it's now affecting. So if I wanted to do something like this, maybe make it smaller, or maybe we would put this one right here because we wanted a different kind of like fire effect. Maybe that was gonna be a meteor. And you know, there's just so many things that you can do with things like this. So you can see how easy I was able to make just, just a different change. Maybe that is a fire meteor that it's coming through us and then I could just change, I could animate this and then all of a sudden you're getting a little bit of, you know, randomness on this graph. So let me just go ahead and undo, undo, and then take it back to what we had. And a couple more. And maybe what I'll do, I'll just make it a little smaller here. We'll just, there we go, something like that. So that's everything that I wanted to show you guys. If you guys have any questions, please let me know. All right guys, thank you much for watching this video. I really appreciate your time. And if you have any questions about anything that I show you on Visual Effects Graph, please let me know in the comments. Also be sure to check out GameDev.net because they have great resources for game developers. And also find me in Patreon.com where I'm basically posting information about what I'm doing behind the scenes and also early access source code. Thank you very much guys.